for is called Tea with Ugly Ugly Dog. Tea sits stoic in a slightly dazed way, but it's the middle of the night. From the sound of the berserk, I should say it was about three o'clock in the morning. Sick Ugly Ugly Dog, they don't really get going with their dead of night ceremony until two. Interesting choice of camping spot, by the way, stoic. It isn't perfect, <laughs> so I can admit it literally. The horrible howling from the Isle of Berserk intensified at a pitch that made goose up bumps creep up on the arms as if you were being stroked by nettles and the individual hairs on the back of the neck went go shoot, shooting upwards like the tentacles on a spiny sea urchin. Let's say tent three mend, amended the ugly folk, cocking its head as he listened to the noise. Whatever, said Stoic, it's quite late for tea, and I've already eaten. Oh, but I insist, smiled like the ugly thug. Just a picnic, you know, Stoic. A little tin to three snack to welcome you to the ugly thug's land. It's always better to have a difficult conversation over a spot of food. He clapped his hands. Ugg's boat was moored beside the broken down, the fat penguin, and from it the grinning ugly thugs brought out plates and spoons and glasses of meat and huds of gunks of deer and milk and bread and everything they might need for a little snack at the ten to three in the morning. Toothless had not had her supper with everybody else earlier because he'd been so tired on account of missing his two naps. He'd fallen asleep while eating, poor Toothless, just nodded off with his head in his soup, and Hiccup had washed his face and snuggled it up in his waistcoat rather than disturb him. He had slept right through the hor howling, horrifying sound of the berserk dead of night ceremony and the subsequent ugly thug attack. It was only now that he smelt food that he put his little snuffling nose outside Hiccup's waist waistcoat and opened bleary eyes. F -f 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 food, said Toothless with little whimpers of excitement, instantly drooling he was so hungry. Do Toothless starving. Now Toothless calmly warned Hiccup, holding the hag up to him on a spoon. I know you're hungry, but don't eat it all at once. It always gives you a tummy ache. Slowly, toothless, little bite, slowly, toothless. Too late. So keen was the greedy little toothless, so hungry was he from f f flying all over the coast looking for kamikaze, that he not only gobbled up the caddock in one eager gulp, he also ate the spoon. Oh, toothless, sighed Hiccup, breaking off as he saw that the ugly thug's daughter was joining them for the meal. Hiccup had caught a glim glimpse of her before at the annual games, surrounded by bodyguards. This is my dear little daughter, Tantrum o Ugly, said Ugg the Ugly Thug. Ugg's dear little daughter, Tantrum, was about six foot two with a lot of flame red hair and green eyes. A beautiful red, oh I love Tantrum by the way. A beautiful red snare dragon had made a nest on her head and she was feeding at acorns. She looked spectacularly beautiful and spectacularly cross. Oh, for four sakes, squeaked Fishlegs, blushing absolutely scarlet. She's looking at us. She's smiling at us. She's waving at us. Act natural. Act cool. Nobody panic. Fishlegs turned first red, then white, and was so overcome with the emotion of the moment that he fainted dead away and fell off his chair. Oh, very cool, Fishlegs, said Hiccup, bringing him round and helping him up to the table again. Very suave. Fainting always impresses these Amazon Viking hell kittens. I have to hand it to you. You really know how to wow the ladies. You'll be a real heartbreaker when you get older. She stopped looking at us, asked Fishlegs with his eyes closed. Hang on a second, keep your eyes closed. She's still laughing and pointing, <laughs> said Hiccup. No, she stopped now. She's picking her nose and talking to her neighbour again. You're quite safe. You can open up your eyes. She looked at me, sighed Fishlegs, his hand on his heart. Tantrum ugly looked at me and smiled at me and waved at me. She's an angel. She's a goddess. Hiccup stared at Fishlegs as if he was crazy. What's the matter with you, Fishlegs? Have you gone... Bananas? Hiccup checked Fishlegs' eyes for any berserk tendencies. He tended to go a bit pink when he was in a berserk kind of a mood. My daughter means a lot to me, Stoic. Oh, look, that's Tantrum. Look at her. And Fishlegs is in love. But look, the snare dragon on her head. And she's quite... I love her eyebrows. Great eyebrows. Uh, this is a question of honour and the barbaric code. You know the rules. Whoever writes love letters to a daughter without asking permission from the father must instantly ask for a hand in marriage, or it is an intolerable insult to her and to her entire tribe. Now, in the barbaric archipelago, weirdly, one of the most dangerous things you could possibly do was to fall in love. Strangely, it was far more risky than the dragon riding or the sword fighting when the other perilous pursuits that a young working undertook. However, 
as the rules clearly state, said Uncle Bristly, if the person who wrote these letters is of royal blood, they can try and win my daughter's hand by completing a single impossible task of my choosing. And what if the letter writer is not of royal blood? asked Hiccup. Then they have insulted the honour of the ugly thug tribe and I get to kill them on the spot, smiled ugly, the ugly, the ugly thug. And if nobody owns up, I get to kill every unmarried young man in your hooligan tribe, all above board and within the barbaric code. No questions asked, no suspicious fingers pointed, all quite within my rights. It's a bad business, this love business, said Stoic, gloomily shaking his head. A very bad business. But you've forgotten one more important point, Ugg, said Hiccup. You can't prove that any of us wrote these letters. It's very unlikely, said H. Stoic proudly. Most of us hooligans can't actually write. Ugg smiled. He shoved his cigar into his mouth and stood up. I shall read one of the letters just in case it jogs the memory of anybody here today. The mighty barbaric chieftain got to his feet. The poetry of the moment was slightly lost by the fact that he was being read by the most brutal chieftain in the barbaric world, smoking a large cigar, his eyes twinkling with wickedness. Dear, he's reading the letter, this is the letter. Dear Tantrum O Ugly, your eyes are like two pools of green, your hair's the reddest I've ever seen. Your quadrupeds are rather fine. I wish you'd be my Valentine. Yours sincerely. And look, there's a Burke Bog Rose. In with the letter. Stings like a stinging nettle scent of a cowpat. The hooligans roared with laughter. They laughing at my daughter. Oh, so I might sigh mildly. Silence, roared Stoic. There was silence on the beach, apart from the odd snigger hastily stifled. Tantrum who ugly admired her reflection in a golden cup in a furious sort of way. I'm waiting for someone to own up, said Ugly Ugly Thud. And then he turned to whisper something to Fishlegs, and he caught sight of Fishlegs' face. Fishlegs was bright red. He was shifting nervously in his chair, and he wouldn't meet Hiccup's eye. A horrible thought struck Hiccup. Ugg smiled an incredibly nasty smile. There's a pressed flower scent with it. A romantic touch, don't you think? Very sweet, Ugg said softly, shaking the letter as if the flower fell into his hand. And here it is, the Burk Bog Rose. The Burk Bog Rose was brown and prickly, and it ponged a bit. Alas, not in a good way. It was very rare, so rare, in fact, that the only place it grew was in the boggiest bits of the bog's work, and it has thus become the tribal flower of the hooligans. Ugg sat down again. I'll leave you to talk among yourselves, said Ugg. <laughs> oh, it's a bad business, this love business. It's a bad business. We'll have the next chapter tomorrow.